Hey guys, it's bro you whack and since season 12 is about to close up here pretty soon I thought now would be a decent time to bring this review video looking back at season 12 Reviewing it looking at the good things and bad things and what we can kind of look forward to in season 13 If you guys are new here I do this for the end of every single season where I review it kind of give a general statement of how Everyone reacted to season 12, but then a separate video I make my own story because I feel like I can't really give my own opinions in a quote-unquote season review so that's why I make it a separate video, but before we get into the video I have to correct my stupid mistake. I made in yesterday's video I I, cu I couldn't live with myself without knowing I made a stupid mistake uh, Because in yesterday's video I said that mercy's healing just to general healing increased from 50 seconds to 60 seconds But it was only to her Valkyrie ultimate healing So you're gonna see right here in this video that I'm gonna be healing this roadhog same amount of damage took However on the right side it is PTR when I am ulting and you're gonna see I'm gonna be able to heal him way quicker quicker because it increased from 50 to 60 seconds and you hear the little ding and boom there it goes right there so that's the that's the updated version of the buff but now that we've corrected my mistake once again proving myself to be an idiot let's look at season 12 let's look at the bad things because I feel like there was a lot of bad things more than good things and what we have to expect going into season 13 so throughout the duration of season 12 there's been two types of compositions or gameplay styles that really roll throughout the whole season and this is the bash meta or many people call it the stun meta I don't know why I renamed it the bash meta, but this consists of Brigida and Doomfist Those were two heroes that contributed to this style of gameplay that kind of made it I wouldn't say OP but made it really effective because not a lot of people knew how to deal with it But now on the opposite side of the spectrum that is more team oriented that is more team centric is the go composition And can I just say something isn't the go composition just the world of tank meta from season 3 because back in season 3 You would run a Reinhardt a D.Va and like a Zarya and Ana or Lucio and then maybe like a McCree or a Genji. Here, it's basically the same thing. You would have three tanks, maybe even four tanks, and the only difference here is that you would have a Mora, all because you would be able to build your your uh, Mora ult really quick because you had these big, heavy tanks. And this Go composition, aka the World of Tank Matter, really proved to be effective because, again, it, it needed that team-oriented composition, being able to work together as a team with all these tanks and being able to build a Mora ult, but if you were able to get that, no team Mora is able to stop you because you can only have so many reapers on the field to stop these big heavy tanks which is one reaper <laughs> but it's really the go composition I really want to focus on and talk about because I feel like this was the main way to win throughout season 12 because and I've even said this time and time again the best way to win overwatch matches is if you're feeding off of your teammates if everyone's meshing well with each other and well with a go composition that just proves my point because you have these big hefty tanks that's going in not dying because they're big and hefty but still getting kills while also feeding them more ultimate charge to once again heal these big tanks while ulting while still doing a lot of damage. The Mora is feeding off of the tanks and the tanks are feeding off of the Mora and Lucio's helping speed all these slow heroes. Nobody's able to take care of these big hefty tanks because once again only one Reaper is able to go on the field and take care of them. There's not a lot of answers which means you're probably gonna die because the enemy team that has this go composition was willing to work together, feed off of each other and be a well-oiled machine. There are other compositions or there are other hero combinations that you can do that can prove to be effective if you're willing to go that extra mile to kind of coordinate this more complex composition where with the goats meta you just need a couple of tanks and a Mora. That is literally it. Now, I've said before Season 12 that Sombra was going to be a great hero, and not even including Doomfist or any of these other GOAT tanks. However, the problem with Sombra, especially on console, is that she takes heavy communication and willingness of the team to work around who she's hacking, or who she's EMPing, or who is going to be the key target that Sombra deems worthy to be able to use her hacking ability. And not a lot of people are willing to do that. It proves to to work and I still believe that Sombra is going to be one of if not the best hero to use in season 13 if you're willing to coordinate if you're not something simple to just fall back on and oh my god we don't have any oh we could just do goats we can just get a bunch of tanks do goats it'll be easy Mora gets her ultimate charge god my god my god and we win the game <laughs> and I feel like that's what we have to look forward to in season 13 and that could be a good thing or a bad thing but I think this is going to be the main meta up until we get another kind of shotgun hero or just someone that can take care of these tanks again I, I might be naive in thinking that reaper is the only not he's i know he's not the only answer but he's the main answer to deal with these big hefty tanks 
but that's really about it. A McCree, yeah, if you can hit your headshots, you can deal with a lot of these tanks, but if you're not able to, and if they're smart and they know how to exploit your weaknesses as McCree, you're not, you're not going to be living. Soldier, once again, you only do a minimal amount of damage. And Farah, also, while a hitscan is needed for Farah, it's not really all that needed if you're not dying from the Farah, since you have all these big hefty tanks that can tank these rockets coming straight at you. And if you're not able to insta-kill these tanks, which you're probably not going to with Farah, you're just feeding the Roadhog ultimate charge because he's self-healing, feeding the Mora ultimate charge, the Lucio, whatever the case may be. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that in the DPS category, there weren't a lot of worthy answers to, to deal with the reigning king of the composition of Season 12, which were big, hefty tanks. Yes, there were some heroes, like maybe a Junkrat or maybe, uh, uh, once again, a Reaper, but it's not an obvious, okay, they have a Farah, I have a counter, and the only way that we're going to be able to take out that Farah is if I'm accurate with the shots. With the Go composition, it's like, <sighs> let's run goats ourselves so that we can withstand their hits. It's not about killing their goats, it's withstanding and surviving longer than them. And then if you didn't have a goat composition, if you weren't willing to work together as a team, you probably played heroes that weren't meshing well together, and then here comes Brigida, here comes McCree, here comes Doomfist to exploit the, the non-meshingness <laughs> of your composition because they would dive in, stun you, kill you, whatever the case may be, because once once again, you weren't feeding off of each other. The tanks protected the healers, the healers helped heal the tanks, and then you would get more damage up because you could survive longer, so on and so forth. <laughs> and I think that's what's going to happen in Season 13. That's not to say other heroes like an Ana or, or a Soldier or whatever are useless, but it's like, why not use a composition that requires such little teamwork that normally wouldn't be stopped? Because again, you have these big tanks, Amora, everyone's working together you this big giant ball that's going in that can't be stopped. <laughs> you know, and there aren't a lot of answers because, yes, Reaper is there, yes, maybe Junkrat, but, you know, it's not a clear-cut answer. Oh, they're running all these tanks? Let's pick this hero or these heroes. You need more than just a little tiny Reaper, and there really isn't that in Overwatch, but hopefully we can look forward to that for Hero 29 because this is probably going to be going on up until Season 13 or maybe until they nerf Moira. But let me know what you think about Season 12 because what I think about it is that it wasn't bad. It's not bad because it's all about teamwork. Teams were willing to work together, play heroes that they don't normally play because they know it would provide them a win. Why wouldn't you do that? People give other people crap because they're working together and playing the, the composition that works to win games. <laughs> well, duh, stupid. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I want to win the game. The best way to win is to run something that can't easily be stopped. But let me know what you think. So anyway, guys, tomorrow will be my Season 12 story. Uh, but in, up until then, let me know what you think about Season 12 as a whole. I love you guys, and bye.